While some civil rights leaders urged a more cautious approach to winning civil rights, Malcolm X expressed the feelings of many blacks that more uncompromising methods of struggle were needed. Like members of the Black Panther Party, Malcolm X advocated the right of armed self-defense for blacks and other oppressed groups who lived in so violently racist a society as the United States. Here is an excerpt of a speech Malcolm X delivered in Detroit, Michigan, two years after giving the speech, February 21st, 1965, he was assassinated in New York City. I just want to say that Malcolm X is one of my favorite people and one of my favorite thinkers and speakers. So it's a special pleasure to read one of his speeches as he also has one of my favorite lines ever. And I'll say it slowly so you guys know what I'm saying. We want to have just an off-the-cuff chat between you and me, us. We want to talk right down to earth in the language that everybody here can easily understand. We all agree tonight, all of the speakers have agreed that America has a very serious problem. Not only does America have a very serious problem, but our people have a very serious problem. America's problem is us. We're her problem. The only reason she has a problem is she doesn't want us here. And every time you look at yourself, be you black, brown, red, or yellow, a so-called Negro, you represent a person who poses such a serious problem for America because you're not wanted. Once you face this as a fact, then you can start plotting a course that will make you appear intelligent instead of unintelligent. What you and I need to do is learn to forget our differences. When we come together, we don't come together as Baptists or Methodists. You don't catch hell because you're a Baptist, and you don't catch hell because you're a Methodist. And you sure don't catch hell because you're an American, because if you were an American, you wouldn't catch hell. <laughs> you catch hell because you're a black man. You catch hell, all of us catch hell for the same reason. So we're all black people, so-called Negroes, second-class citizens, ex-slaves. You're nothing but an ex-slave. You don't like to be told that, but what else are you? You are ex-slaves. You didn't come here on the Mayflower. You came here on a slave ship in chains, and you were bought here by the people who came here on the Mayflower. And you were bought here by the so-called pilgrims or founding fathers. They were the ones who brought you here. We have a common enemy. We have a common enemy. We have this in common. We have a common oppressor, a common exploiter, and a common discriminator. But once we all realize that we have a common enemy, then we unite on the basis of what we have in common. And what we have foremost in common is that enemy, the white man. He's an enemy to all of us. I know some of you all think that some of them aren't enemies. Time will tell. <laughs> Look at the American Revolution in 1776. That revolution was for what? For land. Why did they want land? Independence. How was it carried out? Bloodshed, the French Revolution, what was it based on? The landless against the landlord, what was it for? Land, how did they get it? Bloodshed, the Russian Revolution, what was it based on? Land, the landless against the landlord, how did they bring it about? Bloodshed, you haven't got a revolution that doesn't involve bloodshed. You're afraid to bleed. As long as the white man sent you to Korea, you bled. He sent you to Germany, you bled. He sent you to the South Pacific to fight the Japanese, you bled. You bleed for white people, but when it comes to seeing your own churches being bombed and little black girls murdered, you haven't got any blood. You bleed when the white man says bleed. You bite when the white man says bite, and you bark when the white man says bark. I hate to say this about us, but it's true. How are you going to be nonviolent in Mississippi as violent as you were in Korea? How can you justify being nonviolent in Mississippi and Alabama when your churches are being bombed and your little girls are being murdered? If violence is wrong in America, violence is wrong abroad. If it is wrong to be violent defending black women and black children and black babies and black men, then it is wrong for America to draft us and make us violent abroad in her defense of her. Mm. Mm. 
And if it is right for America to draft us and teach us how to be violent in defense of her, then it is right for you and me to do whatever is necessary to defend our people, our own people, right here in this country.